So I'm up at uh, Clips of the Geyser in Yellowstone doing sunset. Absolutely amazing place. Uh, this geyser goes pretty much all the time now. And you can come up here at sunset, sunrise, and it's just, it's just gorgeous. It's a really incredible view. You got the flats down below. But I'm a little frustrated. The light, there's, there's beautiful and there's perfect. And I did get some good images as the sun was coming down through here. You could actually shoot into the sun because of all the steam coming across here. So we could shoot into the sun and still get the shot. Control the dynamic range, uh, get the exposure dialed in, making sure that the highlights where the sun's reflecting off the water down here before it went down were not cresting above around zone nine and clipping into the whites. I wanted more clouds up here. I've been here before, and this was about five years ago, but we had this radiant sheet of clouds all through here. And when the sun had gone behind the hill, it just reflected off of them and the whole place just glowed. And I got a great image, but due to the long exposure, the clouds in the distance are not quite as sharp as I wanted uh, because the long exposure I used to get the geyser the way I wanted cost me a bit in my clouds. And I may have had a bit of a depth of field issue back then too, because I probably didn't stop and take enough time and analyze my shot, even though I was tripoded and trying to think everything through. Lessons learned. Came back tonight thinking, okay, maybe we'll get that radiant sunset again. It was radiant, believe me. It wasn't the same. It wasn't like it was before. Not that it has to be, but I kind of came up here looking, hoping for this, this reflected light coming down off the clouds, which then, of course, will reflect off the geyser and the steam coming out and all that. It's absolutely gorgeous when that happens. I always watch for those kind of clouds, and it's hard to predict them, but if you got the right cloud form high up, the sun goes down and then it reflects up and down, and everything just turns that purplish, pink, red, radiant hues everywhere. Absolutely amazing. National parks are perhaps some of the most over-photographed places. So while it may be hard to get an image that sells, <laughs> because there's a lot of photographs being made, it's not hard. They're a great place to slow down. Everybody's running through, taking tons of photos, hoping to photograph everything. And you can't do it. I come in here. I stop. I picked this one place came up with the family, kind of looked around. They went back to the truck. They got tired as the sun went down and I just waited for it. And I either get what I want or I get something else or I don't get the image at all. And sometimes that's the way it works, but you don't gain anything in your light and your tone and your beauty and refinement by just running hither and yonder and trying to take every image. It was a glorious evening, beautiful sunset, and I'm satisfied, even if I didn't get exactly what I wanted. And now I'm just sitting here watching what this is doing. And this is where you take the time to stop and say, okay, what can I do different? How can I make something like this unique? Because obviously it's photographed a lot. And we want images that make people go, wow, that's incredible. Even if it's been photographed a thousand times before. So while on the one hand, national parks and geological wonders around the world, natural wonders, I should say, around the world are in some sense, in our mind, they're easy to photograph, but they're really not so easy to photograph because to get something that's truly unique and truly spectacular takes planning, it takes execution, it takes light and tone, and it takes perfection. That's what I'm looking for out here. One of the things you've got to deal with in a scene like this, you see here our values are a lot lower. So let's say I expose this and I put this up here at zone 7 or 8. Well, I'm going to be in probably zone 3 or 4 down here. I don't have the meter in my hand. I can actually grab it and we can look because the sky is an exposure value of 12. we got a 9 on the gray of the water, so 9, 10, 11, 12. It's actually only three stops difference now that the sun's down, which isn't bad because if I put the sky at zone 7, I'm going to be right in zone 4 on this one. The key every time is to think about where your light is coming from, where it's going, what your visualization is, what you're trying to accomplish, and is the subject, in this case, this, going to be illuminated the way that I want it to be. That's what we have to analyze. The concept here is not which way is correct, which way is the way it must be done. It's what is your visualization that's going to meet or exceed what you're trying to convey and bring that, that three-dimensional world into the two-dimensional plane in a way that just blows people away. That's what we're looking for in a great image, whether it's a landscape or a portrait or it doesn't matter. 
It's about understanding the science of, of light and what we're dealing with and then combining that with our artistic, our artistic vision, understanding line and tone and composition and what we want to do with that scene. And that's why what I'm going to do after I get off camera here is I'm just going to think about what are different ways I can photograph this. Even if the light's going, what could I do with this scene, different light, different times of day, whatever, to get the perfect shot for me today. All right, so listen, I waited, and there was just a couple people out here. I mean, everybody goes home when sometimes the best light is going to happen, and you never know. But what happened is that as the sun went down, we did get a lot of pink starting to reflecting off these distant clouds here, and I think we got a couple beautiful images. I'm really excited about these. I actually went ahead and did a 4x5, but I switched it up. I was doing horizontals with the 24mm tilt shift as the sun was setting, getting a little wider angle, getting the clouds up here. Then I switched it up to the 4x5 and actually did a vertical on the 4x5 of it shooting up at about four seconds. Now, we'll see if that one comes out good. I always love doing a 4x5 frame because even if it ends up not being my best image, I, I get to experiment and study and learn from how that image came out. Wait for the light sometimes. You take it, you make it, or you wait for it. And sometimes when you got a sunset and you're thinking, well, it's not going the way I want, sometimes you just wait and 30 minutes after sunset, 60 minutes after sunset, it just, wow, does exactly what you want it to do. That doesn't always happen. So there's there's a risk, but you know what? You're not gonna run to a new location anyhow. I, I'm tempted, I got family in the car, so they're gonna wanna go home and have dinner. I'd love to stay here for a couple hours and do star trails, do a 30 minute exposure with uh, the stars behind this geyser here. But I think we got a few great images that are gonna look good on the wall. And wow, it's hard to walk away because it's so mesmerizing just watching this thing go. It's, it's hard to convey it just from a video or a photo. And once again, I'm, I'm sorry for just the iPhone photos, but when I'm out in the field like this by myself, I can't always set up a cinema camera over here and haul it in and, and do fancy stuff. So this is the way that I'm able to kind of share ideas and concepts about what we can do with the light. Even though the lights waned a lot up here at the geyser, we're still getting reflections. So basically everything happening here is reflecting off all the pools down along here. So when this was pink, these were pink. And now that's starting to fade. It's still gorgeous. And I'm going to wait around for a couple more minutes and see what happens. I think we're pretty much wrapped for the night. Sunset at least 30 minutes ago now. But bottom line is, beautiful, beautiful scene. And I think we got some good stuff, guys. Take it, make it, or wait for it. And more often than not, when you can, in a portrait we can't always do this, but if you can, wait for the light. Plan your image around what the light's doing. Try and Try and think about what the light's going to do. How's it going to reflect off the cloud? You don't always get it right, but the more you actually think about your light, your tone, and your zones, the better everything gets. I want to be able to convey the majesty and bring that, that three-dimensional world into the two-dimensional world as much as I possibly can. That's what we're all about here, is, is trying to convey that majesty and that beauty into the print on the wall. And here's the result. I, I'm really thrilled with how this came out. It's going to look great on the wall. You know, we got we got tone control here. We got the clouds and the dynamic range reined in on those. And we got the richness in the water, the reflections off the pools. There's just detail everywhere. This lens was tack sharp, absolutely beautiful. This is what it's about. Take your time, get the shot, get it right, get your exposure, nail everything nail your post-processing, make it come together for you. Make your visualization what you want it to be.